Okay, in this calculation, we have a balanced Wheatstone bridge with a galvanometer that is reading 120 ohms, and we need to solve for the current through each branch. So let's take a look at the different equations. Let's start off with uh, loop A, B, D, A. Right, so taking a look at loop A, B, D, A, there's no battery or EMF, so our EMF is going to be zero. For our volt drops, we have plus 40 ohms multiplied by uh, I1. We have plus 120 ohms multiplied by I3. So it's all clockwise. And then we have minus 80 ohms multiplied by I2 because that's anti-clockwise. Now, you'll notice that uh, we have 40 I1, 120 I3, and 80 I2. So just mathematically speaking, um, we can actually divide on this side of the equation by 40 to simplify. So you'll see if you simplify, it will actually become plus I1 plus uh, 3I3 3 minus 2I2. Two. Right, just so we can mathematically simplify it, and we can actually get I1 on its own. Um, so I1 will be equal to, uh, if we take the 2 across, it'll become positive, so it'll be 2I2. Two two. If you take the 3 across, it'll become minus 3I3. Three three. Now, if you want, you can put this in brackets just to remind yourself that we have somewhat of a calculation for I1. And we can call this equation one. All right, let's take a look at our next loop, which is loop B, C, B, C, D, B. All right, so that's the loop I've chosen. Once again, there's no battery here, so my EMF will be zero. It's going to be 65 ohms multiplied by I1 minus I3. Uh, it's in a clockwise direction, so it's positive. And then we have minus 110 ohms, because it's anti-clockwise, multiplied by I2 plus I3. Okay, then we have our I3, and uh, this is in an anti-clockwise direction. So therefore, it's going to be minus 120 ohms times I3. Right, let's just simplify, multiply the brackets out, so we get 0 equals 65I1 minus 65I3 minus 110 I2 minus 110I3 minus 120I3. Quite big values here. Alright, so we look for the uh, common denominators here, and we add them all together, so we end up with um, 0 is equal to 65I1 minus 110I2 minus 295I3, and we can call this equation 2. Right, let's move on to our next loop, which is loop AB. C A. Now in loop A B C A we actually have a battery, so we have A B C moving back to A, and we have a positive battery there, and that battery is 20 volts, so that's going to be 20 volts is equal to. Let's start at our first network. We're going to have a uh, one ohm multiplied by I1 plus I2. Okay, 1 multiplied by I1 plus I2, that's clockwise, plus uh, 40 times I1, that's clockwise. Then we have uh, 65, and that's a positive. Okay, it's clockwise, multiplied by I1 minus I3. Okay, so we just multiply the brackets to simplify, so we end up with I1 plus I2, plus 40I1, plus 65I1, minus 65I3. Right, if we simplify further, our final step here, we'll end up with 106I1, 
Okay, you can see there I1, I1 gives us 106 I1 plus I2 minus 65 I3. And we can call this now equation 3. Right, now that we've got our three equations, what I recommend we do is we substitute I1 into equation 2. Let me just write down equation 2 over here. Make a note to you, we're writing down equation 2. 0 is equal to 65. Okay. And here we're going to substitute uh, I1. So it's 65 I1 minus 110 I2 minus 295 I3. Okay, that was from equation 2. So I need to substitute I1 here. 65 multiplied by 2i2 minus 3i3. Subtract 110i2 minus 295i3. Okay, so basically um, this becomes equation 4 and if we simplify mathematically speaking Okay, we end up with uh, 130i2 minus 195i3 Okay, so let's just simplify. We have zero volts. You look for all the common factors, common denominators, so we end up with uh, 20i2 minus uh, 490i3. And I'm going to call this now equation number 4. Okay, now we're going to substitute i1 into equation 3. Let me just write that over here. Let's write down equation 3. Uh, equation 3 was 20 equals 106 multiplied by i1 which is the same as saying 2i2 two two minus 3i3 plus i2 minus 65i3. Okay, so we multiply this out. Our next step, 20, 212, 212i2 two minus 3i8. I3 plus I2 minus 65 I3. Okay, let's try and simplify this and we're going to call it equation number 5. So 20 equals 2, 1, 3, I2 minus 383 I3. And I'm going to call this now equation 5. Right, so what we notice now. Um, what I actually want to do is I want to say equation 4 uh, subtract equation 5. Now, to try and simplify that. Um, and so in order to do that, this 213, I'm going to divide it by uh, 20. So 213 divided by 20. 213 divided by 20 will give us uh, 10,65. So what I'm going to do is I want to multiply equation 2 by 10,65. Okay, so to make a bit of space, let's go over to the next slide. Equation 4 minus equation 5. Okay, once we've, uh, let's just write over here, equation 4 minus equation 5, and that will give us a simplified version. So let's multiply equation 4 by 10,65, and let's just see, that will give us 0 equals 20 times 10,65 will give us 213i2. Um, negative 490 times 10,65 will give us minus 5,218,5i3. Now let's substitute equation 5 down. 20, uh, 2, 1, 3, i2 minus 383i3. 
Okay, so you can see what I've tried to achieve here. I want to cancel I2. So therefore, I3 will be equal to negative uh, 20 divided by minus 4835,5. Okay, so therefore, I3 is equal to 4,136 milliamps. Right, now that you've got R3, you can go back and you can uh, try and substitute it into either equation 4 or equation 5, and you can try and uh, solve for I2. Right, so I'm going to stop the video there, otherwise it's going to become a bit too long, but uh, you can see that we've managed to solve I3. Alright, thanks for watching this video.